critical race theory being under attack and we have AP African American studies being attacked and we continue to be left out of a history of a country that we built. We think it's important to have other ways then to get that story across. We're hoping to utilize this gallery and the artist to do that as well. My name's Laura Pendleton Miller. I'm president of the board of the Blue Lotus Artists Collective, a local gallery that was designed to showcase black artists. My name is Amber Doe, and I'm proud to be one of the artists featured in their inaugural show. A lot of my work is a mixture of conceptual but also historical basis. A lot of it has to do with American experience, particularly black women in America. George Welsh, black artists, the community. My inspirations come from my experiences, experience with others, and basically with nature and how, how forces come together, holistically, you might say, to the heart, soul, and spirit. My name's Allison Miller. I come from a family of artists. My dad's a painter and he taught me how to paint. He was my high school art teacher. I wanted to make him proud, so I kept doing it. What I paint is to elicit a certain reaction, especially from black people. And I really like watching them feel joyful when they see some of the images I'm referencing. We were getting input from local artists that it was really hard for them to get visibility and we wanted to see if we could help with that. Originally we met in January of 22 with the purpose of trying to figure out how we as active community volunteers in the arts could encourage the existing institutions to show more black artists. We got to a point where we thought, yeah, why are we waiting for them to want us, why don't we just do it ourselves? We had so many gifts along the way of people who stepped up and volunteered to do things. So it was really a synergistic effort. One of the local artists, Willie Bonner, came up with the suggestion that we be called Blue Lotus Artist Collective. It is a flower that grows out of muck into great beauty. Blue Lotus Artist Collective, the acronym is black. I identify as a black woman in the past seeing black women in media was always really specific. Maybe they were slave women or Jezebels or maids. So I like to find images where we are celebrated a little more outside of that, specifically representing black queer life from the 90s, which wasn't really spoken about. We feel that it's a great opportunity to educate, especially at a time like now where we feel like, not just as black artists, but as black people, we're being left out of the story. And we have these artists who are telling that story. This particular piece behind me, the American flag, is sort of inspired by my grandfather originally. He lied about his age to serve in World War II. And when he came back to the United States, he faced a lot of challenges that were very unique to sort of what was going on in racism at the time. So I wanted to do something dedicated to him and my grandmother. It's actually her linen that I did this piece on and it's to reflect sort of what it's like to be an American but not completely seen as fully American. I have a series of paintings that depict forces and experiences in my life that are in categories. And this is the African series called Distant Relations. It's about memory. And for all of us who've not been here all our lives, that distant relations are from other countries, other cultures that have merged here and became sort of new experience here. I don't see necessarily specialness every time I look into my own work. I see it as just a material form of storytelling. In the corner, it's indigo, which is a crop along with cotton and rice that my uncle had done the research and found we were actually slaves on a plantation that was based in indigo cotton and rice production. So I thought it was really important to tie that element into the actual piece and have a sense of sort of my ancestral connection with what's happening in sort of modern times. I use mother of pearl shells to sort of indicate the traveling across the ocean. And then within the stripes, I have an interpretation of the Middle Passage. 
So the other piece is called God is Non-Binary, and I wanted to sort of acknowledge the people that came before me in that space, how they utilize it, the yucca plant for fabric, for baskets, for food, and the sort of ways that women continuously reuse things and have to reuse skills, and it sort of shreds us at the end of the day, so the slip looks a little shredded. When they look at my work, I'd like them to look at themselves through my work, therefore finding transcendence, something above what they knew a minute or two before they looked at it. I would love people to walk away with a sense of interrelatedness with the environment around them. I try to bring natural elements to a lot of my pieces to tell another layer of the story. I want to make sure we're thinking about things not just from a human perspective, but in terms of an ecosystem. We have a lot of plans. We're daring to dream big. We're still at that embryonic stage, but we're looking at it from a perspective that it's wide open. I hope that the community will take the cooperative into account when looking at the culture as it expands, diversifies, and becomes much more global in its intent. Blue Lotus is such a new and exciting space to sort of bring local artists to the larger community within Tucson and the greater Arizona area, sort of shine a light on the Southwest. So it's a wonderful new space to be a part of.